How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Spencer Presley. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done any sort of video. Um, currently not in my room as you can tell. I'm in my house um, in the process of moving out slash the house is getting worked on with reconstruction. It's a huge pain in the butt so if everything's echoey, sorry about that. Just wanted to do a video showing off my physical Vita collection. Uh, so we're going to make it short and sweet because I should have over 200 at this point and it's probably going to take a while because I like to talk a lot. Uh, first up, we're going to do limited run games, and then we're going to do, in no particular order, everything else. Mainly do limited run because they kind of started the whole bringing back physical Vita games in a large amount. Other companies have kind of died off, but limited run have said as long as they're able to keep bringing games out, they're going to be doing it. So in terms of number one supporter, they've actually produced more games physically than Sony has at this point, which is super awesome. So we're going to start off with the rarest game out there not in terms of cover rarities. With 1,500 copies made, we have Breach and Clear on the PlayStation Vita. Really, really cool game. I remember I picked it up uh, maybe March or April of 2016 last year for like 70 bucks. And I was like, oh God, I don't know if it's worth it because it was like 25 bucks originally and I didn't want to pay that much more over what it had come out for. Really glad I did because I think it's now going averaging for around 275, 300. It's only going to get more and more expensive as time goes on. Plus, as you can tell, it's the first in the set. It's like I, you have to have it. It's just a, a mandate. So next up, we have their second game in the series, Saturday Morning RPG. If I recall right, I think this had 2,300. I'm probably going to stop myself there from telling all the run sizes unless they're a crazy amount or really low. So yeah, Saturday Morning RPG is a really, really cool game. Also developed by Mighty Rabbit, the guys who do limited run games. This one is a, this was actually my first game I ever got through limited run. Really, really cool. Love the game and I really hope we get episode six at some point, but obviously it's a no hurry. Next up, we also have New and Tasty Oddworlds, uh, sorry, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. I don't know why I made it plural. So this one was cool because they announced this along with the digital version finally coming out on Vita. Obviously it's not the best place to play it, but it is cool that you can still play it on the Vita. I think the port's really solid, just add water. Uh, did a really good job with this as well as Abe's um, uh, Munch as well as Stranger's Wrath. A lot of games just add water is done actually. All right, next we have Futuridium. And this one, I really like. The covers are different on PS4 and Vita. I think the Vita one's a little bit nicer. They have that cool kind of angular space look to it. Next, we have a special one. This is Zeo Drifter. This is from Renegade Kid, the guys who do Mutant Muds. And the reason why I say this one is special is because, also, I haven't pointed out, every game after Breach and Clear, you probably can't tell, has a number on the spine counting up. The Vita ones go LR-V0 number, stuff like that. And what makes Renegade Kid special, it is limited run games, first game with a manual. And a lot of people don't actually think Vita games have manuals, but they actually became more of a prevalent thing after um, the Vita kind of like started its decline in 2013. So there are a lot of cool games with it. I'm actually getting Summon Night 6 uh, sometime next week. I'll probably do a video on that just because that one, the pre-order wait for it has been so crazy and the game looks awesome and it has actually the world's largest full color manual. It's over 70 pages for Vita. So that booklet is going to be insane. Next up, we have Octodad Dadliest Catch on the PS Vita. Really, really cool port. Um, I think Firma did it the guys um they've done a couple of uh games they mainly do a lot of ports they've done their original stuff is like chariot you'll see later well on ps4 they've done chariot i don't think they've done a ton of vita games next up we have our first shmup it's soldner x2 from east asia soft um well published by east asia soft and this kind of begins the trilogy of east asia east asia soft games it was this Lost Sea, and you'll see Rainbow Moon up soon. Another cool thing about this game, has a manual. And actually, as of this week, um, this video should go up today, so Saturday, November 4th, 
Um, this week, Soldner, the rerun on Play Asia just sold out. So now the only place to get this game is online through second parties. That took a long time for the second one to sell out. Next we have Rainbow Moon. Very controversial cover, uh, just white background and logo. I actually really like it. They were uh, obviously going for that kind of classic Final Fantasy look. In another situation where we have a full color manual. My only complaint actually with the manual is the uh, back isn't, uh, it, it still has stuff. There's not like a like blank back, which just kind of makes it seem like they ran out with an even amount, but that's like my graphic designer and me being anal. Next up, we have one that I am a big supporter of, Dragon Fantasy II. I always have to remember the subtitle, The Black Tome of Ice, Special Edition. This is actually one of the few games that this edition specifically is only available physically. If you buy Dragon Fantasy 2, you will not get some of the features and additions they made to changing, basically, Dragon Fantasy is an RPG, and Muteki, the guys who made them, re uh, did new stuff for Dragon Fantasy 1, which will be coming again physically soon and then two when they turned it into Black Tome of Ice. It's a very minor stuff. The trophy sets are still the same. Actually, the trophies might be a different list. Uh, a few of these games actually have exclusive trophies. I know the East Asia stop did, but Sony kind of made them have to stop that after a while because uh, it started messing up with their uh, servers and whatnot. Either way, next up we have the first really big title, I think in my opinion, One Way Heroics by Spike Chunsoft. This was a really, really cool game. I'd never heard about it before it had come out. It is a side-scrolling RPG, and it's very fast-paced, almost kind of like a roguelike. And Well, it's not almost like a roguelike. It is a roguelike. Very great um, art, super cute pixel stuff, and it has even Sheer and the Wanderer crossover as well as uh, Danganronpa in it. Really, really underrated game, and actually one of the cheapest limited-run games you can pick up now. Another game of note, we have Thomas Was Alone. I love this one just because I love this game. I got it through PS Plus, I think, originally. I had never played it. Um, always heard Mike Bethel's games are so good, and they do not disappoint. Back cover, actually, I really like, is just black. Uh, nothing, no special shades, it is just black. And the manual keeps the minimalist look, but I think... Uh, I think does it very well. It's very fitting for what it is. And especially, I, I appreciate Mike's pride on everything he does, kind of having that extra little touch of love and care put into it. You'll see soon with volume. Uh, next up, we have another curved digital game, uh, Stealth Inc. Ultimate Edition. So this is a special case of, it's the Ultimate Edition DLC. And actually, one of the first cases we have, and this is not an awesome thing, uh, of some games that are actually PSTV compatible digitally, but not physically. I don't have a PSTV, so I can't really relate to that. It's kind of stupid, but it's a whole thing. Um, just wanted to point out for all those who might care or are out there uh, curious about it. But yeah, Stealth think is a really, really cool stealth game. T 2D side-scroller, great soundtrack. Next up, talking about Mike Bithel. We have Volume, and it's actually a cool thing about Volume. Again, nothing on the back, but it actually does have some design this time. Cool thing about Volume is it is actually one of two games to have a foil cover on the Vita. It is this game as well as the launch edition in Europe of Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed. Uh, really weird, but I, like, I wanted to find that out for some reason. So yeah, another full color manual. Actually has pictures up in the front for lore. Yeah, volume, awesome, awesome game. Another great port done by Just Add Water. Took a while to come, but hey, it was well worth the wait. Next up, we actually have a trilogy of games. We're gonna show the first one. We have Oddworld Stranger's Wrath HD. I remember when Limited Run partnered up for New and Tasty, I was like, you have to do Oddworld. It was my first entry into the series. It is a first-person shooter unlike anything else. I love it, I love it, I love it. And not only did they bring it physically to Vita, they brought it with three covers. So here is the second cover. It's a little harder to see because the light's in here and the game is still shrink-wrapped. But yeah, 
back cover's the same, front's different, and then the most awesome thing of all is the Oddworld Stranger's Wrath L exclusive limited edition. This was a PSX 2016 exclusive, so has awesome art. It's kind of hard to see of Stranger on it. You can get a good look there. And then the back has a little thank you from Lauren Lanning and his wife Sherry, who I always forget her name, but yeah, in a little drawing there of Stranger, giving some beat down. I love that game and I love the triple covers. I'm always a big fan of variants, which I know is very controversial. People, people do not like having to buy multiple copies. I eat up that stuff. I love supporting games that I love. Next up, talking about games I love, Lone Survivor. If you've ever enjoyed Silent Hill, this is the best 2D version of Silent Hill that's not Silent Hill. Really, really cool game. Cannot recommend it enough. I think it calls it the director's cut, although the PS Vita version, no, yeah, it still is. There was, it was just one of those weird situations of where a game would sometimes be <laughs> added more on PS4 and they'll bring the name over to Vita but not really add anything else. So next up we have Curses and Chaos. This is by the guys at Tribute Games. They've done Flint Hook, uh, Ninja Psyche DX, as well as um, uh, previous developers of like Scott Pilgrim. This is a cool little like, um, it's like a 2D horde mode, really cool pixel art, very simple eyes. You uh, wouldn't really get a good, good guess of the graphics until you look at the actual game or the screenshots. Very addicting in two player. Uh, single player is fun just to like kill some time. Great soundtrack as well. Talking about great soundtracks though, we have Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defenders DX. Really cool, it's basically Defender, but instead you are cats underwater getting uh, milk and trying to save it from aliens, I think. Really cool game. And last but not least for my little mini pile we have, uh, definitely in our last game, is The Swapper. This game is super cool. It is a very atmospheric horror adventure. Horror in terms of its story, there's not jump scares, but uh, it's a cool puzzle adventure game. I really, really dig it. It looks great on Vita. Next up, still going with the curve games, very strong. We have the Swindle. Swindle is another one I actually never had played before picking up on Limited Run. It's a roguelike that's like got a steampunk aesthetic uh, where you're robbing uh, into people's places and the houses are always uh, dynamically generated, so they're always different. Really cool game. Uh, definitely a good one to just kind of pick up and play. Next up, we have some more cover variants for all of you people out there. We have Runner 2, well, like, technically Bit Trip presents Runner 2, future of, future legend of Rhythm Alien. So this one's got a really cool cover on it. And it, what's actually weird is, I think, do they both say it? Yeah, they both say limited edition on there. I'm guessing just because of the limited run they have going on. But yeah, so here's the first cover and the back. Really cool little game by uh, Gaijin Works, well I guess actually now, not Gaijin Works, Gaijin Games are now Choice Provisions, they changed their name. And here we have, this is the PAX East cover, and has a different front and back. I still have it sealed just because I really only need to have one version open, but I love having all the different covers. Next up, we have Nova 111. This is another cool game from Funkatronic Games, and uh, if you never heard of it, Funkatronic is basically XQ Games, aka Pixel Junk People. It's another kind of roguelike, but the aesthetic and music is definitely unlike anything else kind of out there. Another really cool Vita gem you probably haven't heard of, or you may have gotten from PS Plus and just never played. And next up is one very special to me. This one is... Ray Gigant. It is the first real JRPG from Limited Run. So it's developed by Experience, the guys who did Strangers of Sword City, and I now can't think of any other game they've done, but they do tons of RPGs. Oh, um, I'm just blanking. I'm going to move on, but they do tons. There's a new one coming out, and I'm blanking on the name. First person, actually no, uh, it's a, usually they do dungeon crawlers, but the visual aesthetics for Ray Gigant is really cool. It's like a mixture between like, 
uh, it's it's weird. It's a very it's it's not a it's not like the most deep RPG in the world, but the art style and music are really really stand out. Especially when you see the battles, the animation they put into all the characters is like breathtaking. And next we have you know I might as well do these both at the same time. Uh, Mutant Muds, uh, yeah, Mutant Muds Deluxe and Mutant Muds Super Challenge. So Super Challenge is basically the 1.5 harder sequel. Of Mutant Muds Deluxe. They are different games. They don't have any uh, repeated like levels or anything like that. Really, really cool games. Also made by Renegade Kid, the guy who did Zeno Zeo Drifter. Did not get a manual for these. I don't know why. I may have been just kind of like, hey, let's get these out sort of thing, but really glad to have them either way. They're super fun. I've beaten Deluxe. I'm still working my way through Super Challenge when I get a chance. Speaking of hard games, Jesus, Risk of Rain. So, Risk of Rain is a game I always like played at my friend's house but never owned a copy until Limited Run. And man, this is a hard as hell uh, roguelike. Um, really fun. The pixel art is it's very simple but like deep at the same time. Uh, the music is super haunting. I actually got the vinyl with this as well. It's really, really fun game, especially co-op. It's a million times more fun in co-op like most games though next up we have broken age this is the first and hopefully uh first of many partnerships with limited run and double fine uh i know this game is a little controversial but i really really like it uh it's a cool point and click uh adventure game runs great on vita and actually has an exclusive trophy set here because um the guys at double fine weren't able to help uh, get the game file ready on Vita so the guys at Mighty Rabbit kind of went in and ported it to Vita so it would work physically. So if you get this, you have an exclusive one of a kind platinum. Next up from a good buddy of mine, uh, his company at PM Studios published Demo and they worked together with Limited Run to get a physical copy of Demo. Really, really awesome. It is a sweet, sweet rhythm game that is all kind of based on piano, very soft music, although they're not all kind of soft piano sounds. The art and the story is really, really cool. Really would appreciate more kind of rhythm games on Vita physically, but I know our choices aren't super great outside of Super Beat Sonic and Persona, but we do have Persona 3 and Persona 5 coming out later, so there's that. Next up, another controversial boxer, but might be more so on uh, PS4. Bard's Gold. Never played this. I know I had it through PS Plus. Another randomly generated kind of roguelike game. Very simple, like really almost looks like it was made in Game Maker um, look, but really deep. A uh, good one to just kind of lose some time in really fun music really glad i picked it up uh, i know it's like a one-man team who made this uh, the studio is called pixel lantern and i don't have the guy's name but really fun game next up we have darius burst cs this one's funny it actually came out quite later on vita than it did with the english ps4 release because they were so amazed that they were able to get Darius Burst um, released in America, they forgot to ask for the Vita version. So the Vita version took two months later to come out, but hey, it came out and the port runs great. Uh, no DLC on it, but still having the game in English still is really, really awesome. Oceanhorn is up next. It is basically Wind Waker, like a top-down Wind Waker, but it runs on your Vita. It's done by the guys at FD's. FDG and Con and Corn Fox Bros. Uh, originally it was a mobile game and they just ported it to consoles and then Vita by popular request and then it got a physical release, which I love when stuff like that happens. And next up we have another set of variants. We have Plague Road. This was a Kickstarter game actually. The Kickstarter is back in December of 2016. I backed this on Kickstarter, a bit controversial because I know a lot of people don't really like it. I enjoy it, it's got a really haunting kind of art style. It's a very simple RPG, but it's a fun one nonetheless. And what's possibly, not even possibly, this is easily my favorite PlayStation Vita game I have just because of how gorgeous this box is. So this was the exclusive Kickstarter backer one. This is, to my knowledge, the rarest PS Vita game in existence. It is still sealed, as you can kind of tell. Same back, different spine, and 
different front. Uh, should have around nine, seven, 900 to 700 copies. I always forget which one's which. But yeah, love, love, love that Kickstarter exclusive copy. And then next we have As Divine Hearts. This is a Kimco RPG on Vita. Uh, I've not put too much time into it. I just got it recently and have been playing a lot of uh, Ease instead. So As Divine Hearts popped it in. Very simple kind of... Um, Unity run RPG still more JRPGs the better speaking of we have a sealed copy of Ease Origins I got this with my collector's edition you'll see why it's not uh, open soon because I have uh, the other copies of it but yeah so Ease Origin is a great port done by Dot Emu took them long enough to come out but hey we got a physical copy with the collector's edition very happy so now we get into all of the not limited run stuff. So, as I say so some more, we have Bad Apple Wars. This is the exclusive day one edition at GameStop. Has a art book inside as well as this uh, different cover for the box. The standard cover of the game is on the actual one. I won't open it up, but wanted to show that off because if I opened everything up, we would be here all day. And then next, I mentioned other companies are getting into limited Vita stuff, and that includes East Asia Soft with PS Vita. So their first release was Tachyon Project, right? Tachyon Project Limited Edition. This one, I think, was another exclusive port to physical, but also may have just come out digitally as well. Each of the boxes come with a CD uh, certificate as well as individually numbered copies. So I have Tachyon Project, as well as I just got in this week, the orange cover of Semi Spheres. There's a blue cover as well. Um, Tachyon Project was a twin stick shooter, and this one is a, a twin stick puzzle game. Interesting how their first two games both kind of involve twin sticks. So we have next, in no particular order, these are all just going to be standard games. Occupus Beat, uh, an acquire RPG, just came out earlier this year. Undertale. Got it physically through Fangamer. The port is through 8.4. Uh, I have heard nothing but amazing things about this game. And also, it is not actually all black. You can kind of tell. There's the city there on the back. Get a good look at that. And the cool thing about this, not only does it have... Well, the fact that it's physical is cool. It has one of the most unique manuals I've ever seen. It came shrink-wrapped because this is not really a manual, but still fits like a manual and is good enough for me. It has like one of those golden book foil finishes right here. And on the inside, it tells the prequel of the game in a storybook. It's really, really cool. Really unique case. Next up, we have Danganronpa V3. This is the reverse cover for it. I like it a little bit more, even though the characters on the front I find very odd that um, yes, to my knowledge, is none of the main characters. <laughs> but yeah, on the back, it has a shot of everybody. Next, we have X-Blaze. This is a visual novel from Arc System Works as a sequel to um, the other X-Blaze. This is X-Blaze Lost Memory and the other one's like Embryo something. I'll remember when I see it. And here is my Asian English copy of Ease Origin. This is same game that Limited Run has except the covers are different. This was published in Asia by Arc System Works. They do a lot of um, Dot Emu's physical stuff over there. And I just kind of wanted to pick it up because the art on the front was different and I enjoyed picking up all the different covers. Next up, we're just gonna speed through all of these because man, we're gonna be here all day and this video is already almost uh, 30 minutes. So we have X-Blaze Code Embryo. Another visual novel. The Malaysian release, or I guess Asian English copy. Uh, I don't know why I said Malaysian. Asian English copy of MLB The Show 15. It is important to note about this copy. It is actually the only version of this game with a physical copy. Everywhere else in the world got a download code. Because why would Sony make a physical box without the game in it? I don't get it. Minecraft's the same way, but I don't have Minecraft. Next up, we have MLB The Show 14, just the year's previous game. MLB The Show 13, year's previous game. 
And then it will be to show 12, and you may be wondering, why does my cover look weird? Because uh, I ordered a $2 new copy on Amazon, and it was the Canada cover. Each year, sports games, depending on where you live, give you different covers. I didn't really care. And besides, if anything, it's interesting that I have the Canadian cover for a Vita game that it actually looks different. I figured, why not? It was like, like I said, it was new for $2. Next up, I have, let's do some more uh, Ease games. I have Ease Memories of Celseta on PS Vita. It's an action RPG series. Following that, we have Ease 8. This one I always mess up. La, Cro La Crimson of Dana. This is the reverse cover. The cover looks the same, besides it doesn't have the ESRB stuff. And then on the back, you have some more art. Another action RPG, really, really good so far. But I'm not playing it anymore because they are reworking the dialogue and basically making it a whole new localization. And many people have stopped either playing it or buying it. That's a whole kerfuffle I might get into one other day. Uh, next up, another RPG we have is a criminally underrated World of Final Fantasy. I was amazed that Square Enix made another physical game in America, but I was really glad I did because this game is fantastic. It looks beautiful on the Vita. The cross save works flawlessly. It's just really nice. Like when Square Enix like really puts their effort into Vita games, they really knock it out of the park. Next we have an adventure game from Telltale. This is The Wolf Among Us. Have not actually played more than the first episode. People said the performance was pretty bad, but from what I played, it was bearable, at least if you've not played the other ones. Um, next we have Yomawari Night Alone. Weird thing about this version, uh, Yomawari Night Alone on the disc actually has Hotel in Oniki, which you'll see later because we have its own version. And the reverse cover is actually the regular cover for Hotel in Oniki. But yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a weird one, especially if you already bought it. And even on the spine, no matter which one you have, it has both names. It's uh, interesting to have it in a combination pack. And I always, I, you'll see I have a couple other combinations that I picked up mainly because they're available physically but have different SKUs. Um, we have Zero Time Dilemma, the game from the Spike Chunsoft as well. It's a visual novel kind of horror adventure game. Wipeout 2048 is a launch racing game. Still looks gorgeous. Love that game. Walking Dead Season 2, another Telltale Adventure game. Walking Dead Season 1, the complete first season, plus 400 days. Don't know why my voice made a weird noise on that one. We then have Virtue's Last Reward, Volume 2 of the Zero Escape game series. Trying to like build it up so you can slowly like kind of see I'm on like my third stack. Um, next up we have Tales of Hearts R on the PS Vita. This was exclusive in North America to GameStop. Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits, a uh, criminally underplayed game. I think it's a great port on Vita. They advertise the mini games way too much, but it has a really solid single player and looks fantastic. Um, next, one of actually the more rare games on PlayStation Vita. It's actually about to get a reprint, but the not uh, basically best price edition of this is Shin Gundam. Um, this all right? Basically, it's Dynasty Warriors Gundam Reborn. The Japanese copy is Shin uh, Gundam Muso. So it runs really, really great. And we never got a copy of it. The game is localized, but was never released digitally in English or physically anywhere else. All the, the only thing we got was the PS3 version, but the Vita version runs great. And I'm a big Warriors fan. Had to import it. It's very import friendly, even if you have zero knowledge of Japanese. So easy recommendation there. Next we have, speaking of Spike Chunsoft, Sheeran the Wanderer, The Tower uh, of Fortune and the Dice of Fate. This one's a really, really great roguelike Sheeran. It's a classic, uh, runs great on the Vita, has a really cool special edition uh, that Axis did exclusively on their store. Next then, we also have PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. This is basically PlayStation Smash Brothers, but with a competitive twist, and it bombed super hard, but man, I love this game. I love, love, love that game. We have Corpse Party Blood Drive next. This is a kind of another adventure horror game. 
Really, really cool. This is the reverse cover for it. Fun game, surprisingly dark just by the art style, but uh, if you ever get a chance to play these games, highly recommend the PSP and the Vita version. Next up, talking about Dynasty Warriors, we have Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. This is the exclusive English-Asian release. And almost everything I have that's an English-Asian release is pretty much from Heavy Arms. They are a great Malaysian uh, store who will are very easy to get a hold of, very easy to pick up rare games. I'm going to be getting a copy of um, the Cyber Sleuth sequel next month through them, so very excited. Uh, Dynasty Warriors Extreme Legends 8 Complete Edition. Uh, really sad because this is one of the, actually this is the last Dynasty Warriors game we got physically in North America. Uh, so pairs up well with my empires. And then here's the first Dynasty Warrior game we got in America. I think this was actually a launch game. It's Dynasty Warriors Next. Pretty solid. It doesn't have a lot of features, but looks good. and Has a little bit of gimmicky stuff from launch, but I mean, I think a lot of launch PS Vita games are all just like, use the screen, use all the features, all the screens, all the features. Uh, next we have another Spike Chunsoft game. It's Conception 2, a criminally hated RPG. I like it. It's super not deep, but man, the... Uh, visuals look great, the music is super catchy, and the story is so uh, like out there and stupid, you can't not love it. Next up, we have our first European title. This is Phineas and Ferb Day of Doofenshmirtz. This is an exclusive Phineas and Ferb game on the PlayStation Vita. It's developed by Virtual Toys. They have a couple of weird exclusives you probably would never have heard of. Um, I'm a big Disney fan. I actually do like Phineas and Ferb, and I just wanted to pick this up because it's such a weird exclusive to have. Uh, getting more expensive to find, like, because some of uh, there are so many uh, versions they need to make for Europe, it's actually getting harder and harder to find the ones that have English covers because so many of them will either be in German, Spanish, French, stuff like that. Next, we have Shantae Half Genie Hero. This was made by uh, Way Forward and distributed by Xseed. Shantae is a series I cannot believe took this long to come to Vita. It is perfect, looks amazing. The art, everything, the music is catchy. It is just an awesome 2D platformer. Highly, highly, highly recommended. And next, we have first of very many Otome games. This is, uh, for if you guys don't know, Otome is basically a reverse harem where you are uh, someone who has to choose between multiple routes and those routes contain exclusive handsome boys, like you see at the top there. Most of the uh, Otome games I have, if not all of them, I think are all made by Idea Factory, but most are published by Axis. And next, talking about Idea Factory, here's a whole bunch of games that are not um, Idea Factory made, uh, well, that are published by Idea Factory. We have Super Dimension Neptunia versus Sega Hard Girls. These are all going to be RPGs of some sort. This is just a traditional RPG. Then we have Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 1. It's a remake of the PS3 version, but better in every way. Another traditional RPG. Rebirth 2. Producing Perfection, I thought Rebirth 3 was around here somewhere, but my stack is all out of whack. Producing Perfection is actually, um, this is a weird one, it's like an idle simulator game, but where you're the producer manager, so very interesting. It's actually my first entry into the Neptunia series, is with one of the like most hated ones. Uh, this is a strategy RPG, it is Hyper Dimension. Sorry, Hyper Devotion Noir, Goddess Blackheart, really fun strategy RPG. Uh, and I'm a big noir fan, so that was an easy recommendation. Next up, we talked about it earlier, we have Super Beat Sonic. This is uh, a previously exclusive rhythm game from the guys at PM Games, sorry, PM Studios and Nuri Joy. They also did, or some of the team who worked on that also worked on the DJ Max games. Next up, we have Dungeon Travelers 2, The Royal Library and the Monster Seal. This is a Aquaplus RPG. This is a first-person dungeon crawler playing as girls. Girls are in seductive positions. Nothing new for video games. Fun game, nothing like of note. It's a cool one to have to the collection. 
Uh, we were talking about this earlier. This is Hotel in Oniki. This is the just Hotel in Oniki edition. No uh, extra game. This was not sold in stores and was only sold through collector's editions. I'm sure it'll get rarer eventually. It's just kind of a cheap... It was cheap when it came out, so I think games like that will kind of take a time to get more expensive. And I bet in the future, the one that's not bundled with uh, a Night Alone will be a lot more valuable. Next up, we have two games. Dragon Quest Builders. This is the Japanese edition that came with my Metal Slime Vita. And the English Azen edition, which is a uh, fun fact. These actually have shared saves. So all of my progress I did in the Japanese version, when I plopped this in, I was exactly where I was, but the game was in English. Super, super cool. Uh, I prefer the Japanese one just because it has the 2D art, but this has the American cover, which is why they stuck with the 3D one. Great game. It's basically Dragon Quest, um, but plays like Minecraft and has a story. Super great. Cannot wait for the sequel. Another game, so uh, I think it's criminally underplayed, but hopefully we'll get more action with the uh, pro version coming out. Dragon Crown is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's developed by, oh my god, why am I forgetting the name? Vanillaware. Vanillaware does amazing, amazing work. Uh, super great game on Vita. Touchscreen is used perfectly, and it's cross-played between PS3, Vita, and soon-to-be PS4. And next we have, this is a weird one, uh, for many reasons, SD Gundam G Generation Genesis Game Card 1 and Game Card 2. So this is the only game, and probably will be only game, that requires two Vita cards because the game is so big, there is, well here's a manual, Game Card 1 holds the home icon, and I think about... Three gigs of it is on there, and then Game Card 2 holds another three gigs. So the game is around six gigs big, and the largest Vita memory card, uh, sorry, the largest Vita game card, there are one gigs, two gigs, and four gigs. They uh, never made an eight gig. They were talking about it, but because the system never got too popular, they never made eight gig because there really wasn't a need for most games. So really unique that it comes with two, and I'm sure that's going to get really expensive, and that's another English Asian one, which makes it even crazier. Um, we're gonna just kind of blow through these ones, so these are obvious. Persona for Golden, one of the best games on Vita. Is it the best? Actually, I don't think so. Um, I don't actually know what I would think the best game on Vita is. That's really hard. Um, Persona for Golden, if you have a Vita, you have to own this game. If you love Persona, here are two games you also have to own. Uh, Dancing All Night, this is the Japanese version, and then here is the English version. Pick these up just because for obvious reasons. Uh, great rhythm game, looks amazing. Can't wait for Persona 3 and 5, Dancing All Night. Next up, talking about rhythm games, we have DJ Max Technica Tunes, the first and only DJ Max game on PlayStation Vita. Really cool. It's my intro to the series, actually. And this got a physical release exclusively through Amazon, and then I think had another publication a couple years ago. I'm sure it'll get rare. It's always been around the $50 mark. It's never been lower because that's what the digital game was sold for. But I feel like this one will be a weird one kind of come down the line because this was one of the first online-only Vita games that were sold. These weren't like, these were not at GameStop, anything like that. Um, next up, another English-Asian release is Sid Meier's Revolution, sorry, Sid Meier's Civiz Civilization Revolution 2 Plus. Uh, it's basically a Civ game, a building, strat turn-based strategy, civilization builder, Really cool. The Vita version does not run amazingly, but it's cool just to have this game in general, let alone a physical copy. And it's actually my second Civ game. I've only ever played Civ Revolution 1 on PS3, so it's cool to have the sequel. Next up, we have Child of Light on the PlayStation Vita. Really, really great game. I cannot believe that Ubi Ubisoft did a couple of like Vita releases like way longer than anyone kind of thought they would. And I'm so glad they did it for Child of Light because this game is amazing, looks amazing, sounds amazing, is a completely underrated RPG. It needs to be played. Next up, speaking of underrated, but most people will never play, Disney Infinity 2.0. Notable about this is many things. Most people don't care about it, so I'm gonna say the one thing people do care about it. Hey, has a really thick manual. 
probably because it has to and all of it is legalese, nothing exciting, but it has a thick manual. Uh, great port, got me into the series. Rest in peace, Disney Infinity. God, I love that series. That's all I'll say because I know people do not care about that game. Next up, we have Sinran Kagura. Oh, what is this one? Shinobi Versus. When I have the my reverse uh, cover, it's a little harder to tell. Shinobi Versus is a um, Tamsoft uh, made game, if I'm not mistaken. It is a beat em up, 3D beat em up. The sequel, Estival Versus, another 3D beat em up. This is the reverse cover. Fun stuff there. And, oh my god, we're like not even close. We have Mind Zero, JRPG, made by Acquire. Kind of underwhelming, but I got it really cheap, and the main cover kind of looks like Persona 3, so why not own it? It's not an, ins and it's not an insult to play. I've played a little bit of it. it it's, worthy, it's worthy of playing. Uh, Valhalla Nights 3, really cool game. This one was made by Marvelous. Um, came out, bombed terribly, had a lot of big problems. It got a fix called Valhalla Nights 3 Gold. None of that came over to America for some reason. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fun like game. It's basically got party combat similar to a Toikiden or a Monster Hunter. It's interesting to play unless you're a collector like me or a big fan of Marvelous's kind of games or played the other Valhalla Knights. It's probably a skip for most people though. Speaking of Marvelous and Tamsoft developed stuff, this is easily one of my favorites of theirs. Valkyrie Drive. Oh God, I always forget this. Bihikuni. Bihikuni. Uh, this is man a just Yuri game out the ass. I'm actually not that big of a Yuri fan, but the game looks amazing. It is awesome, awesome, awesome. It has a cool soundtrack. Next up we have an Eng English Asian version of Samurai Warriors 4 2. There was not an English release of Samurai Warriors 4, not even in America or Japan, very weird, but they have it for two. Um, fun game, awesome one. I love Samurai Warriors 4. Samurai Warriors 4 2, even better, has more characters, more story. Port runs amazing on Vita. Tecmo Koi, I, I, I don't get why in Japan they're so good at like keeping the sport going, but in America, after Toikiden 2, they're like, no, nah, you're dead to us. We're not even going to give you digital shit anymore. Whatever. Next up, we have a notable release, A Rose in the Twilight. This is NIS America's first and only ESRB list game. This was sold only online. This was uh, out earlier this year. It's from the guys who made Hotel and Oniki and uh, A Night Alone. It's a um, it's kind of survival. It's No, it's not even really survival. It's just more of a horror adventure game. Really, really cool. Amazing art style. But yeah, notable that it's... Uh, the only game from NIS America to never have the uh, ESRB thing on it. I do think it's weird they have this. They didn't need to have it, but they have it. <laughs> so, fun game. I'm sure that'll get rare for sure. Next up, we have another Otome game from Axis. This is Period Cube. It came out earlier this year as another uh, visual novel. Operation, we might as well bring both of these out. Operation Abyss New Tokyo Legacy is, oh, here we go. This is another one from Experience. So, first person dungeon crawler, it's sequel, Operation Babel, New Tokyo Legacy, even better game, sequel, super, super fun. Here's a fighting game, we have Street Fighter Cross Tekken, port's amazing, runs great, no one bought it, but hey, um, at, least we, at least we have it, we can say the same thing about Marvel's Capcom 3. Uh, Hot Shots Golf World Invitational launch Hot Shots game amazing Hot Shots game still fun clap hands one of the most underrated first party developers at Sony I love golf games and all of that comes from this series I love Hot Shots Golf next up another experience RPG Stranger of Sword City really really cool art style very unique for the fact that it has a kind of very mature art style look and in the game, you can even switch it to a super moe anime look. I've never seen a visual change that like drastic that's just an option in any game, and I think it's really, really cool. Uh, that game also tanked really hard. Experience is not, not notable for their sellable games in America, unfortunately. Um, Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, one of many, many, many collections on the PS Vita, but is actually probably the best. Uh, the ports are based off the PS3 version um, from Bluepoint, 
and the actually the the port was made by Armature, but that's needless to say. It's Metal Gear Solid, Action Stealth, amazing ports. They look great. Technically, it's four games because it has Metal Gear Solid Two, Three, as well as Metal Gear One and Two. No Peace Walker, but whatever. We're still salty about it. Borderlands Two, first person shooter, collectathon, super controversial. Not a great port at first after many, 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 many updates. I think it even still got an update like even a couple of months ago. Um, runs a lot better. For what it is, it is an interesting game. Um, in terms of the game, actually, I love Borderlands 2. In terms of the port, it's very interesting. Uh, comes with some of the DLC only through a download code. It can never be bought otherwise, but yeah, Borderlands 2... What a weird, what a, that was a weird time in like Sony, like, all right, Vita support, go. If you don't, don't really know what to say after that. Next up, one of my weirder games, this is a Japanese game, it is High School of the Dead Slots. So, this is just a straight up slot machine game. Like, it is the High School of the Dead slot machine game you would see in Japan, if they still even have those, but crammed into a PS Vita cartridge. It's kind of weird. Um, I saw it was getting really expensive because it was out of print and I like High School of the Dead. I wanted to try it. I play it. I went, yep, that's a slot machine game. Put it back on my shelf and mainly bust it out just to show people. It's very weird. Uh, Michael Jackson HD The Experience. Um, rhythm game, very underrated. Most people never play this. I actually think it's a really good rhythm game and uh, yeah. A round launch, if not a launch game, uh, and another reason it was cool to pick this up is dirt cheap. Like I said, it's really fun, and it was delisted, so even if you just like Michael Jackson's music or if you like rhythm games on the Vita, it's really good. Its only complaint is that it only has 15 songs, but I mean, I, I paid like five bucks for it, so. Next up, let's just do these all at once, because this is just going to be, hey, it's the same game three times, uh, because Arc System works. We have Chrono... Oh god, here we go. Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. It's one of the weirdest like cover print jobs ever. It's, it's legit because I opened it, but every time I look at it, it looks like I printed it. Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasm, and then Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasm Extend, the last Blaze Blue game on Vita. I will say, uh, it makes it sound like I'm shitting on it. Uh, Blaze Blue ran great on Vita. The ports were amazing. Arc System Works really busted their ass to get the game running at 60 frames. Always tried to have exclusive like feature or story modes because they were usually never out first. Cool ports, but that series has been milked to death. Next up, we have two more visual novels, but for once they are not Otome games. We have based off the anime Steins Gate and Steins Gate Zero. Next up, we have Unit 13. Uh, one of the last games made by Zipper, the SOCOM team. Really cool third-person shooter. Uh, very underrated. Really, really fun. You can, it's always dirt cheap, like, no matter where you go. But it's a cool game to play. Next up, another RPG from Idea Factory. Make You Labyrinth of Death. Fun little RPG. Oh, some more Neptunia games. We have Mega Tag Mention, Blanc Plus... Hold on. Blanc... Plus Neptune versus Zombies. This is the Blanc spinoff, which is all about killing zombies. Plays like a beat em up, um, similar to the Sinra and Kagura games, because it's made by them. A uh, European exclusive, we have Lumo, uh, was released uh, physically everywhere else, and it's basically just a top down isometric puzzle game. Very simple graphics, but it's really fun and it's pretty cheap. Uh, like when I picked it up, it was like 20 bucks. Next up, we have Project Diva F. Uh, oh, I guess Project Diva Hatsune Miku F Second. It is a rhythm game, but you play as Vocaloids like Miku. Important to note with this one, uh, actually has a manual. Sega, Sega, known for being world's biggest cheap asses, actually made a color manual for this. No idea why. Uh, we're not going to complain though. Cool thing to note, and also its sequel, Project Diva X. All right, we're getting there. Launch game, Uncharted Golden Abyss. If you like Uncharted or third-person action adventure games, this is a great game. Please pick it up. 
Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3. I cannot believe that this port works as well as it does, looks as good as it does, or even is around, like, at all. Um, was getting more expensive, probably isn't as much now that they relisted Marvel vs. Capcom. It's still delisted on the store, though, so if you're even a remote fan of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, it's really cool to pick this up. Uh, this one I'm probably going to get some shit for. Uh, I picked this up in clearance bin at Walmart. Um, SpongeBob Hero Pants. Is this a good game? It is a good game. It is good at what it does. It is a simplistic 3D isometric platformer, and it has random SpongeBob stuff. Is it good for easy trophies? Yes. Am I ashamed of owning it? No, because it was like two bucks. Um, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I have almost zero shame in having this in my collection. We'll say that. Next up, we have another collection. We have the God of War collection. This is made by the guys at Sanzaru. It has only got God of War 1 and 2, but really cool to have it on there. Next up, we have Disgaea 3 and Disgaea 4. These enhanced ports have pretty much all the DLC from the PS3 versions and uh, are just really addicting and really fun uh, strategy RPGs. Next up we have Ben 10 Galactic Racing, another one I'll probably get shit for, but I bought this because I actually have a big, um, I used to love Ben 10 growing up, I, well, I mean I still do, for this version of Ben 10, this and the original Ben 10 I really liked, also Yuri Lowenthal voiced Ben, this version of Ben. Uh, as a kart racer, I wanted to give it a shot, as a kart racer, it's pretty underwhelming, but I wanted to go to shot anyway, and figured why the hell not. Next, we have Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. Very interesting. They made an exclusive 2D Metroidvania Batman game for the PlayStation Vita. I cannot believe how long this video is going, but Jesus, why not? We're, we're still going. We're plowing through, everybody. Next up, day one edition of One Piece Unlimited World R. This is a exclusive in North America to GameStop. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome game. Uh, basically, it's like a 3D collecting action RPG. Very weird, but really cool. Uh, One Piece Burning Blood, another One Piece game. This is a 3D fighting game, well, oddly enough, by Spike Chunsoft. Looks great, plays great, is really, really fun. And then, getting surprisingly pricey, we have Odin Sphere Lufthausen. Uh, is a another Vanillaware game. It's a 2D action RPG. Looks amazing. Plays amazing. Crossplay is great. Cannot recommend this game enough, but you will have to pay full price or more for it because it is getting pricey. Because Atlas does not make a lot of uh, does not make a lot of their Vita games anymore, even if they do make Vita games. Next up, we have Root Letter. Really, really cool cover. This is another visual novel, and this is just a straight up uh, visual novel. No dating. This is kind of solving mysteries. Really, really cool. One of the best written visual novels I've ever played. Uh, next up, the predecessor, um, the guys at V Blank, or I guess the guy, uh, Brian, Brian, last name with a P, I always forget. Um, published this has got a little bit over 3,300 copies, I think. Uh, no manual, but hey, it's got Retro City Rampage on there. It's an exclusive edition. Really cool that he did this. Uh, big fan of Retro City Rampage. Next up, we have Soul Sacrifice Delta. This is, uh, well, I guess I should have just brought this as well. And Soul Sacrifice 1. This is the English Asian copy. Soul Sacrifice Delta is basically Soul Sacrifice with more in it, and it's a better game. Um, physical copy was only available in Asia or Japan, which also is part of Asia. I'm being redundant because I'm trying to speed through this, and I'm nowhere near done. <laughs> um, more Idea Factory games. We have... Oh God, Trillion God of Destruction, a really cool strategy RPG. Um, well, actually no, I think if I recall right, uh, this, yes, this is a strategy RPG. Sorry, I was like, I was trying to remember getting us confused with that one. Really cool game made by uh, Idea Factory, again in Compile Hearts, really fun. Did not get a lot of love when it came out though, for some reason. And next up, might as well bring these out as well, by the awesome guys at Falcom. Trails of Cold Steel 1, Trails of Cold Steel 2, one of the best RPG series I had never heard of in my entire life. This is probably my first Falcom game I actually got into really well. 
Uh, ask anyone who's ever played these games, easily one of the best series on Vita, e like for any RPG fans that rival uh, Persona 4 Golden even. Next up, a rhythm puzzle game, Luminous Electronic Symphony. Amazing game. Almost no one played it. Dirt cheap. Please, buy, please play this game. It's so good. Uh, Gravity Rush, made by the guys at Japan Studio. Um, amazing game. is ported to PS4. Still, this version's cheaper. It plays just as well. Great story. Super fun adventure game. Next up, we have Lost Dimension. I uh, think basically Danganronpa meets uh, Valkyrie Chronicles. Uh, just actually got ported to PC, but fun game made by Fudiu and published by Atlas. Great, great, great game. Another Spike Chunsoft game, another RPG. We have Grand Kingdom. This is a weird one, but a uh, fun game is super, super deep gameplay and very online focus. You can play all single player, but it's online integration is very interesting. Uh, another one that came out did not get a ton of coverage. Uh, one of my favorites, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. So I'm a huge Digimon fan. This is a fantastic game. The art is amazing. I love Digimon. It is a great RPG. English, Asian copy only. But hey, it's the game nonetheless. And it's Digimon. You gotta, you gotta love Digimon. Next up, some more English, Asian copies. Asterix Wars Phoenix Fiesta. Uh, I've never heard of this series before Asterix Wars before I played it. Uh, it's another kind of 3D arena beat em up. Fun stuff. Not, it's pretty disposable. The story's pretty whatever, but is an interesting one to get. If I'm not mistaken, I think actually this was my first English Asian game I ever bought. Just because I'd heard of it and was like, yeah, this seems interesting. Let's give it a shot. Another Otome game, Nor 9. Otome, they're good. Just, if you like that stuff, there's a lot. Buy them all. That's all these get anymore. Resistance Burning Sky. Man, what a disappointing first person shooter this is. But hey, it's a first person shooter on the Vita and I wanted to try it because I like Resistance. This didn't, that, that did not change my opinion. It's a, it's a pretty bad game. Sorcery Saga has a longer subtitle. We're not gonna go through it. It is a top down, plays like a mystery dungeon game. Uh, mystery dungeon game based on like cooking uh, as I kind of, uh, a lot of elements for it. Really fun, another Idea Factory game. All right, weird European exclusive no one's ever heard of. Looney Tunes Galactic Sports. This has never been released in America, only digitally and physically in Europe. Another one made by Virtual Box. Actually, it's not bad. It's a mini game collection, but an interesting one at that. My God, how is this taking an hour? I have a lot of games. Galgun Double Piece. Fun fact about this game, very perverted, very funny, rated M for mature, on the back says it rated E for everyone. Next game, Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. It has a manual, but it's really a foldout, but it's still kind of cool. Fun 2D fighting game, I don't know why we never got the sequel, would be super easy to localize, please change that, it has a lot of anime stuff. Next up, we have two RPGs kind of in the same series, Atelier, Eska, and Loggy Plus, very expensive game. Atelier Shally Plus, less expensive, but still going to get there because they were online only. Zero Escape the Notary Games has Zero Escape 999 and Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward on one cartridge. Great game, pick it up, 999 is worth it alone. The voice acting and enhanced visuals are amazing. Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus 2, don't know why I picked up that one first. And then Sigma Plus One, 3D action adventure, hard as balls, port on this is okay, port on this starts terrible but actually gets better eventually. Don't ask me how that happens. Weird job by Tecmo. Next up, we have English Asian copy of Resident Evil Revelations 2, physical only in Asia. Really cool port actually, done surprisingly well for how much content is in the game, but you can tell that there are a lot of compromises needed. But when you get over its little like technical stuff, it is still a great way to play the game. And a great co-op game. No matter what you play it on, it's a great co-op game. Next up, we have three games that are basically all the same thing, but amazing nonetheless. 2D platformer, looks beautiful. Rayman Origins, Rayman Legends, everything in that but better. And this European exclusive, Rayman Origins and Legends in one Vita cart. Finding this with an English uh, cover, very hard. Uh, why should I care if it's English on the cover if it's the same game? Don't ask, but it's a great game. 
Next up, Sonic Racing Tran All Star Racing Transformed Bonus Edition. Cool 3D uh, Mario Kart game. There are not a lot of kart racers on Vita, and this is one of the best ones. Next up, we have Soldner X2. This is the Play Asia copy. It is sealed because it is the exact same game as my Limited Runs version, but I wanted to pick it up because it has a different cover and I wanted to support them. Next up, Smart As. It is a, a puzzle game. Think Brain Age. So, testing your brain, keeping you active, make sure you don't fall asleep. Um, we have another one. This, or if you can think 3D action like Monster Hunter, Toykin in one. Toykid and Kiwami, everything in one, but with more stuff. And then finally, the last Tecmo Koei game released physically on Vita, Toykid in 2! God, this game is so good! My god, Tecmo Koei, please make more games on Vita physically. I love your games. I hate buying digital. Oh my god, we're still not even done. We're still going. We have next, Lego Force Awakens Star Wars. Great game. I love this. My only Lego game I have on Vita. Platinumed it really fun and probably because I love Star Wars, but I haven't played a Lego game in a long time This is a great port collect-a-thon a lot of collecting Lego little big planet Vita. Why am I not describing that more because bam Lego big L Lego big planet little big planet Vita Marvel superheroes edition This is notable for two reasons one It's the whole game and all the Marvel content is actually now been delisted So this is the only way to get all the Marvel content in this game. I forgot how much stuff was on the inside Great game, super fun. Uh, next up, Freedom Wars. Monster Hunter, but with guns and is post apocalyptic, developed by Dimps and Sony and Shift. Amazing game, amazing, 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 amazing game. Pick this up, it's dirt cheap, it's amazing. The story's great, the music's great. Need this game, everyone need this game. And I think it was the last physically made game by Sony in North America because fuck, that's tragic. All right. We're still speedrunning. Final Fantasy X, 10 2. Only 10 on the cart. Final Fantasy X 2 on the cart. This was an English Asian release. Looks amazing. 10 2, one of my favorite. I think 10 2 is better than 10. I'm controversial. Next up, we have Dead or Alive 5 Plus. How is this port so good? How does it look so good? It's a fighting game. I love it. It's fantastic. Deception 4. Think Home Alone. Except you're a sexy anime devil lady, and it's really fun. But wait, Deception 4 Nightmare Princess Asian English Edition. Same game, more content, more Home Alone. No wet bandits. Um, Assassin's Creed Liberations 3. I got this game with my Vita. Uh, it's Assassin's Creed. It's fun. Assassin's Creed Chronicles. What? More? It's, it's good. They're just 2D Assassin's Creed. They're, they're good. They're cool style. Uh, New Little King Story. This is a... Oh my god, this is actually kind of hard to describe. It is a kingdom RPG simulator building game made by Konami as a sequel to Little King Story. And actually, I forget, I always forget, this has a manual. Really cool, only has a physical copy in Europe though. Um, in Japan, but whatever, that doesn't matter. For English physical. Um, speaking of Konami, Silent Hill Book of Memories. Great game, not amazing. Bad Silent Hill game, but a fun Diablo clone. Touch My Katamari. Another great game. No one played it. Like, really good Katamari. Um, yeah, if you like Katamari, you roll up stuff. It's got great music. That's the game. Killzone Mercenary. One of the most beautiful PlayStation Vita games in general. First-person shooter looks like it's using the Killzone 3 engine somehow, and it looks just as good on the Vita as it does. Uh, Guerrilla Games Cambridge fucking blew it out of the water. It's a great port. Fate Extella, the Umbral Star. Think Dynasty Warriors, but with Fate, and it was not made by the Dynasty Warriors team. Really good. Danganronpa, Ultra Despair Girls. Danganronpa World, but third-person shooter gameplay. Danganronpa, don't know why I just didn't do that as well. Danganronpa 1, Danganronpa 2, Visual Novel, Visual Novel, best on the Vita. Play these games. They are amazing. Next up, we actually are getting to the bottom. We have Criminal Girls, Invite Only. Criminal Girls 2, Party Favors. Don't know why I forgot that one. Um, think Pokemon, but with girls that are being punished, and there's lewd stuff. But these are great games. 
Think loot Pokemon, but don't think it's that weird. Actually, just don't think about it that much, and these are great games. Fantastic and underrated. Sean Shiplock approved. Next up, speaking of underrated, no joke, this game is $7 on Amazon. Brand new. This is a Tri-Ace Spike Chunsoft RPG. It is not that cheap because it sucks. It's that it just was criminally underplayed. Great, 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 great RPG. Pick it up. It's gorgeous. Translation's good. No one talked about this game coming out last year. Please, somebody buy this game. It's so cheap. It's insultingly cheap. Next up, the game I could not think of for the life of me. Another experience first-person RPG, which I haven't taken the sticker off. We're going to change that tonight. Not on this video because it's going too long. Demon Gaze. First person RPG, really good, surprisingly good. Should have been bland, but it's not. That's why it's getting a sequel, and it's out in less than three weeks. So don't forget to pick that up. Next up, we have Epic Mickey 2. Don't, uh, don't ask why I did that. My phone was being weird. Epic Mickey 2, Power of 2, exclusive physical release in two places in English. Europe and Mexico. Mexico version, very expensive. Don't know why. If I could get it, I would. If you want to give it to me, great. I'll give you no less than $50 for it, but it goes for hundreds of dollars because it has an ESRB rating but was only released as a system bundle in Mexico. I know too much about these things. Next, Earth Defense Force 2. You're shooting big bugs. This looks like a PS2 game, but that's not a bad thing Actually, if you don't care about graphics. But Earth Defense Force, great. Runs terribly. They all do. Don't think of that as a Vita problem. That's a series problem. Next up, we have, so we're still speedrunning, Jack and Daxter Collection. Jack and Daxter 1, 2, 3. Um, 1 runs okay, 2 and 3 run bad. Mass Media did a pretty bad job porting these, but it's Jack and Daxter and I love the cover. Injustice Ultimate Edition, another fighting game. How does it look this good? How does it run this good? Why did no one play it? I don't know, but it came out. This got a release, the Ultimate Edition. They released this and not an Xbox One port. Never makes sense to me. I don't care, but it's weird to me. Hyperdimension Neptunia V Rebirth 3, or is it Rebirth? Yeah, it's Rebirth 3 V Generation. Another RPG remake of the PS3 version, super good. Last Neptunia game, I think. Hyperdimension Neptunia Action Unleashed U, great 3D beam up made by Tamsoft, the Senra and Kagura people, all that stuff. Oh my God, we're still going. I have so many of these games. Army Corps of Hell. Uh, it's Pikmin, but you're Satan. Yep, that's pretty much the game. Uh, it's good, though. Um, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max. Arc System Works uh, fighting game. Pretty fun. Got it on the cheap, but it's just a, um, another uh, Arc System 2D fighter. There's a lot on the system. Arno Surge Plus. Uh, probably one of the, maybe if not the most expensive, the second rarest underneath Breach and Clear in terms of its rarity. Uh, Gust uh, RPG, really, really great. Looks great. Can't wait to play more of it. Have not played enough. Occupus Strip, uh, the prequel kind of to Occupus Beat. Um, you are stripping vampires and it is a 3D beat em up in Tokyo. Really fun. Another criminally underplayed game, Aegis of Earth. Tower defense, but you are not one. T I'm sorry. It's a tower defense game, except your tower is the city, and the city. It rotates all on wheels. Really weird, but really cool game. Weird dub. Almost there. I promise this time for realsies. As I just noticed a hole in one of my Vita game cases. Sorry. Need for Speed Most Wanted. One of the few EA games on Vita that is actually good. Criterion developed this along with the console versions. It is everything that's in the console versions except no DLC support. And the online could only do four players. Amazing game. People still play this online. As, as long as the servers are up, people are always still playing this game. It's very good. Natural Doctrine. Hard as balls RPG, but I will not use the DS comparison. But yes, plays like a top-down Valkyria Chronicles and is really cool and no one played it. Another Vanilla War game, Masamura, sorry, Masamura, Muramasa Rebirth. It is a remake of the um, Muramasa game on Wii, but has DLC that you have to buy, but it's still a great game, and the port has some nice additions to it. Another weird one, Muppets Movie Adventure, European exclusive um, 2D Muppets game. I love the Muppets, and I like 2D platformers. This is not a great game, but it is a good game, and I only half am embarrassed to be showing it to you now. 
Mod Nation Racers Road Trip. This is a bad Mod Nation Racers game. It looks good, plays bad, and everything else about it is very disappointing. God, I wish this series didn't die as miserable of a death as it did. But it did! Also, I got it for $2. That's why I own it. All right, um, this is a European copy, but I printed a cover online. Shout outs to whoever made it. it looks nice. Um, I think it does. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Collection, one, two, three. Ported okay, not as bad as the Jack and Daxter one, but it is still made by Mass Media. Ragnarok Odyssey in Ragnarok Odyssey Ace. Ragnarok Odyssey Ace is everything in Ragnarok Odyssey, but has more content. Think Monster Hunter. There you go. That's the game. Puyo Puyo Tetris. Thanks, Ubisoft. This is why we can't have Puyo Puyo Tetris in the West. But you know what? It's a great game. Puyo Puyo plays great. Tetris plays great. The original games play great. If you have a PS4 Switch, pick it up, or even better, import the Vita version. I think the Vita version's the best. Uh, Psychopaths, Mandatory Happiness. It is a visual novel game that is just the complete first season of the anime, but in a visual novel. Two more stacks. Two more stacks and we're done. Oh my god. Uh, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time. Sly Cooper 4, the 3D collect-a-thon platform game. Very fun. Sly Cooper Collection actually runs great. One and two is on the card. Three is a download. That sucks they're not all on the card, but at least they play great. Slain, Back from Hell, a signature edition game. Think Castlevania more than Metroid and is a 2D action game. Really cool look, very cool metal soundtrack, and glad to have it. Shinobi Do 2, Revenge of Zen, an acquire and spike game. This is actually Spike before Spike Chunsoft had the weird new logo, but yeah, sequel to Shinobi Do. Think Tenchu, but not as polished, but it's a fun game. Also voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. Um, Shovel Knight on Vita. It's Shovel Knight. It's amazing. The music's great. The gameplay's great. The manual. Thick as hell. Look at this thing. That's a great manual. Thanks. Yacht Club Games and Fan Gamer for publishing it. And our last stack. Holy crap. Alright. Cannot believe this went that long. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters. Um, think... First person dungeon crawling except Ghostbusters in an RPG. Tetris Ultimate, really boring, but it's Tetris, so you can't really be that bad. Telsagrad, 2D indie platform puzzler. Should have come out in America physically. The publisher's Tedesco was too cheap to give it a shot or give it to limited run game. So I imported it. It's fine, it's not, not bad. Terraria, 2D Minecraft. You build shit in 2D, it's fine, it's a good port. No more updates anymore, though. And last but not least, Tearaway on the PlayStation Vita by Media Molecule is a great game. It uses the every feature of the Vita in a unique and amazing way. And God, I love these games. And now we're going to count them all out somehow. Um, you know, fuck it. I got to edit this anyway. Or you're just going to watch me count. Because we got a lot. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow, I actually did that pretty evenly. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, mm, 200. Don't know why I blanked out on there. I have 200 and... I, I gotta take one out. 216 Vita games. Holy shit, that's a lot of Vita games. If you actually watched through this whole video, thank you. I cannot believe I just spent an hour doing that. But you know what? I had a good time. And I love the PlayStation Vita. I will do more collection videos in the future. If you have any suggestions or would like me to just show you the game and shut up, I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, subscribe to my channel. I'll do more videos eventually. Uh, they will not just be only collection videos. Wow, I cannot believe that took that long. If you Seriously, if you watch this, please let me know in the comments below. That is amazing. Uh, if you'd like, you can support me on Patreon. I am uh, patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E, wait, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Spencer Presley. There'll be a link below. And also, Follow me on Twitter at Tortured Forest P. You can follow my podcast um, at SMT Network or just look up Shin Megami Tensei Network. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of talking. This is like a lot of talking, but God, I love.
the PlayStation Vita. Have a good one.